Let's go to our wrap of world news now, courtesy of the BBC, CNN and Radio Australia. And first to the conflict in Syria. And the NATO military alliance has agreed to deploy Patriot missiles along member state Turkey's border. Turkey formally asked its NATO partners to deploy the US-made anti-missile system after a series of cross-border shellings, including one that left five civilians dead back on October the 3rd. Germany, the Netherlands and the US have agreed to provide the Patriot missile batteries, which would come under the command of the Supreme Allied Commander Europe. That's according to the NATO statement. There's also growing international concern that President Bashar al-Assad's government may be planning to use chemical weapons against the opposition forces. But the NATO meeting in Brussels, before the NATO meeting in Brussels, rather, the NATO Secretary General, Anders Fogh Rasmussen, warned there would, that this would provoke an immediate international response. He also explained the rationale behind the agreement to allow Turkey's deployment of the Patriot missiles. Actually, I do believe that a deployment of uh, Patriot missiles uh, will serve as an effective deterrent and that way de-escalate the situation along the Syrian-Turkish uh, border. Because the mere fact that the missiles, the Patriot missiles uh, have been deployed make it necessary for any potential aggressor to think twice before they even consider attacking Turkey. That's the NATO Secretary-General Anders Fogh Rasmussen. Well, Kurt Volker is a former U.S. ambassador to NATO. He now heads the McCain Institute for International Affairs at Arizona State University. And he joins us from Washington, D.C. Ambassador Volker, welcome to RN Breakfast. Thank you very much. This deployment of NATO Patriot missiles in Turkey along the border, is it just for defensive purposes or is this a clear threat that these could be used to attack Syria? Well, I don't think Patriot missiles are really well suited to attacking Syria. So I don't think that's what people should conclude from this. But I would say two other things. One of them is if there are any thought of uh, Syria retaliating against Turkey or using weapons against Turkey, mm. um, then these Patriot missiles would be able to take out incoming missiles that would threaten Turkish territory. So that's the first part is defending Turkey. The second thing, and this is related, uh, you've seen the warnings from President Obama and also from the NATO Secretary General about President Assad using chemical weapons against his own people inside Syria and saying that uh, this would be a game changer for them as, as they look at this conflict. If that were to lead to some form of international intervention against the Syrian government because of that chemical weapons use, then having these Patriot missiles inside Turkey would also be a means of protecting Turkish territory while such an intervention took place. So it's um, it's all, at this stage though, it's all there as a deterrent against Syria and against exactly. Syria lobbing things, trying to lob missiles over the border or attacking over the border into Turkey is the primary reason. Right. That's what it is at the moment. And also clearly a, an effort to dissuade President Assad from using chemical weapons. I think the goal here is to uh, convince him through the warnings and through these deployments that any use of these weapons would in fact not prolong the life of his regime, but in fact shorten it. So do you think that is the mo which is the most serious concern within NATO at the moment? Is it uh, Turkey's concerns about what's already been what's already occurred, which is over border attacks, or is it the intelligence suggesting movement of chemical weapons? Well, I think the concern is the in intelligence about the movement of chemical weapons and the risk that they would be used either in Syria or against Turkey. Any use would be terrible. Um, what NATO has within its means is to take decisions and efforts to protect Turkish territory. Uh, NATO doesn't have a mandate or a, or a decision to go and intervene in Syria at this point. Uh, that's where you have others outside of NATO um, as individual leaders and leaders representing individual countries, such as from the United States or the UK or France, who are uh, issuing their own strongly worded statements about the possible use of weapons inside Syria. Uh, as I can understand it, and perhaps you can clarify this, the intelligence about the movement of chemical weapons or the ingredients of chemical weapons within Syria is coming from the US, isn't it? Uh, that's my understanding, but again, I don't want to speculate on that. There's uh, Lots of countries have intelligence sources inside Syria, and there's a lot of intelligence sharing that goes on. And also, intelligence is always imperfect. You, you never really have a clear picture. Uh, but the best information that uh, we've heard, um, as reported in the media, is that there has been some effort to access the stockpiles, and that itself is a worrying enough sign to warrant these kinds of warnings. Uh, intelligence is imperfect, and, and front of mind is the intelligence in Iraq, of course, that 
caused, uh, that was one reason for the invasion against Saddam Hussein was the intelligence suggesting that the stockpiles, that the chemical weapons uh, were being made and the stockpiles were being accessed. And that turned out to be completely wrong. Uh, that's true. And remember, there are several differences here, but one of them is that Saddam Hussein was deliberately trying to throw a smokescreen. He was trying to misinform about whether he had chemical weapons or weapons of mass destruction or not. And uh, willfully or not, one can argue that, but we in fact believe the reports that we saw didn't turn out to be the case. Uh, the other major difference I would point out is that you have a raging conflict going on in Syria already where the regime has killed within the last year 30,000 of its own citizens, and the rebels are now marching or attacking in Damascus. So it is consistent with what one might think about the last throes of a regime to say, well, we've got to take out the chemical weapons and try to use them to protect ourselves. That's why it's so important that the international community is sending a message that that won't work, that uh, if you try to use chemical weapons, in fact, you will bring on a greater response and it'll shorten the life of the regime, not extend it. Well, Syria has said in response it would never use such weapons, talking about chemical weapons against its own people. What do we know about Syria's chemical weapons of capability? Well, uh, only what I've seen in the media reports. I haven't been focusing on this, but uh, you've seen reports of a significant amount of tonnage. I think I heard the figure of 450,000 tons, and this is mustard gas, sarin gas, uh, VX uh, gas. Um, so this is quite worrying, and it was there principally as a Syrian deterrent uh, in the event of a conflict in the Middle East where there might have been other nations with chemical or possibly even nuclear weapons engaged. So that's why it's such a large and, and militarily significant stockpile. The fact that the regime has said that it wouldn't use them is welcome. That's great. We hope they never do. And uh, we certainly hope that the warnings that we've seen issued recently uh, confirm the regime that this would be a very bad idea. It's quarter past eight on breakfast. Our guest this morning is Kurt Volker. He's a former U.S. ambassador to NATO, joining us from Washington, D.C. this morning. Kurt Volker, Russia warns of grave implications uh, of NATO deploying Patriot missiles at Syria's border. What do you think Moscow means by that? Well, I just think that Moscow doesn't like the idea of NATO moving uh, military equipment around and putting in uh, defensive missiles. But quite frankly, they know that Patriot missiles are not very effective as any kind of offensive weapon. It's not a threat to Syria. They're well aware of what's going on inside Syria. What we've seen with Russia over months and months is serving to protect the Syrian regime by uh, refusing to agree on any kind of UN-sanctioned intervention or UN-sanctioned action against Syria. I think they see that this movement of missiles and the, the response to the threat of chemical weapons increases the possibility that if these weapons were used, there would be an intervention in Syria despite Russian objections. And so they're obviously objecting to some of these means along the way as well. So Russia would not be impressed, though, if it was persuaded by the intelligence that Syria is getting ready to access its chemical stockpile. Well, I think it, I would put it this way. I think it takes away an argument from the Russians as to why there should not be an intervention. Uh, currently, they've, despite the 30,000 that have already been killed, they've stood by the Syrian regime and prevented any kind of UN, UN Security Council resolution. Uh, the use of chemical weapons makes that position even harder to defend than it already is. So we're 20 months into this uprising now and part of as you've been saying one part of the decision by NATO to deploy the batteries of of Patriot missiles is a signal to President Bashar al-Assad to not widen the war beyond Syria's borders against his own people beyond Syria's exactly. borders uh, but already there's been incre increased uh, attacks within Syria and more attacks within Damascus again have we entered a new phase do you think with what's going on inside Syria and with this NATO deployment well, I do. You know, I think if we look back to where we were a year ago, uh, there were ways to um, intervene or to support the uh, those who were demanding change in Syria without these levels of civil war and violence that we're now witnessing and without the influx of Islamist extremists who are now fighting to gain control within Syria. Uh, one thing that would happen if the regime falls now is you would have uh, a contest for who actually gains power, whether it's Islamists or whether it is a more secular group, uh, whether it's an inclusive government or one that's trying to reimpose just a different kind of dictatorship. I think we would have been far better off a year ago to have acted then. 
Uh, all that being to said, to have acted in what sense? Uh, d- uh, d- I would argue that we should have looked at a no-fly zone and a safe zone for protecting Syri- Syrian civilians uh, many, many months ago, uh, back when the f- conflict was first beginning. Uh, it was clear that the regime and it issued direct threats themselves. They intended to kill as many people as necessary to stay in power. Back when we were looking at only a few thousand civilians having already been affected by the war, rather than the thirty thousand that we see today. So, just finally, uh, Ambassador Volker, what's next in this move? Because the UN has moved its observer team out. We're moving these Patriot uh, Patriot missile batteries uh, along the border. When will they be in place? Uh, it takes between days and uh, a little more than a week to move a battery like that. I think NATO will be acting with all haste to do so. Uh, meanwhile, as you said, we're seeing a, some kind of difference in the conflict in Syria now where the fighting is going on inside Damascus. Uh, again, one can never predict exactly how any kind of fighting like that would go, but it does seem the rebels are having greater success and are using uh, more powerful armaments. And so you could see events continue to escalate over the next week or two inside Syria. Do you think we are seeing just um, uh, a warning signals here from NATO or do you think the international community has now made up its mind that it will intervene in some way? No, I don't think that the decision has been made yet. Uh, I think that uh, what you have with these deployment is a protective measure for Turkish territory. You have a warning to Assad not to use chemical weapons. And you have a measure that would be con- that would be helpful to uh, inter- the international community if, in fact, there were an intervention, because it would help in that context with the protection of forces in Turkish territory. Good, Volker. Thank you very much for joining us on Breakfast. Thank you very much.